Welcome back, guys. Uh, this video is about replacing the fuel and oil lines on a chainsaw. Um, in this case, it's a Home Light Little Red XL. And this chainsaw has a an automatic oiler. And it, it works off of uh, pressure from the crankcase through the carburetor. And so it's got a couple of different hoses that route it. <clears throat> and... Yeah, I'm using Tigon line here for that. You got to have the right size that's big enough to fit tight in the, you know, in the plastic tanks, you know, but not so much that it's going to restrict or squeeze the inside diameter. So uh, before I did this, though, I took note of how this chainsaw was routed, and yours may be different, uh, but in this case, we've got two tanks. Red is fuel, blue is oil. Filter at the bottom comes up out of the side of the tank and to the input side of the carburetor. This is the carburetor here. And then there's the return line from the carburetor that comes back in the tank, but then on this chainsaw, it goes to the top, the lid, which has a purge valve on it. And that's used to essentially prime the carburetor, but it works by, you know, pulling vacuum through the return valve and thereby sucking the fuel up into the carburetor. So it goes down in the tank, comes up to the cap. And then the oil, got a filter at the bottom, a different kind of filter. I'll show you that. Comes up and does not go through the carburetor. I just drew it on top of the carburetor because that's how it is in this chainsaw. But it goes to your chain oiler. And then this is not a return line coming out of the car. This is actually a pulse line. It's receiving pulse from the engine through the carburetor, the same pulse that drives the fuel pump that's built into the carburetor. So that comes over into the oil tank and it has a duckbill valve in it. It's actually got a little vent and a duckbill valve that I'll show you. <clears throat> and that's to create one-way pressure so that oil doesn't, you know, back up uh, into the engine is what some people say. It's either that or it's just to maintain, you know, pressure in one direction. There's also a duckbill valve on the side of this tank um, so that fuel can't leak out, but if there's vacuum inside the tank, it can pull through so that you don't have any vacuum in your fuel line. You never want that. So um, let's get started. I'll show you what I did. Okay, so to replace these lines in these two tanks, uh, I've got our new fuel filters. You can see that's about the same size as the, the original one. But the original one actually looks pretty good and I could reuse that, you know. Um, but since I had these, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them, why not? And uh, on the oil side, it has this filter which is just a screen inside of a little hollow tube in there. Um, there's really not much to worry about with this, as long as you don't get any debris that can get stuck inside this tubing because it goes straight to your, you know, your oiler on your chain. Um, one thing I noticed was, you know, all of these tubes, even though that one actually looks a little bit bigger, uh, but all of these tubes are really the same size. They might not look like it, um, but they are. They're all the same size. <clears throat> so that makes it pretty easy. So when we're picking our our Tigon sizes over here, I'm going to get one of the ones that's cut in the middle because it's not flared on the end. And if I take all my choices here, I want one that's the, about the same di outside diameter and the inside diameter, too. If they're too thick, they're going to be very hard or impossible to get through the little holes in the tank. Um, if they're too small, they'll fit too loose or they won't fit over the nipple. So you want to get something pretty close. So the one I'm going to use is going to be this one right there. I don't know what size this is. I would tell you if I did, but just get a variety of those things and pick which one you need. 
Now the key, like I said before, is we're going to cut these to the same length as the original ones. Um, we're going to start with the oil tank. So let me move the fuel stuff out of the way for just a second. And the thing is, um, on the oil tank, you've got this little vent apparatus here. It's a little plastic piece. It's got a vent, an unobstructed vent on the tip. That's not a valve. Um, it's just a little tube in there. And then you've got this duckbill valve on the end of it. If you can see that, I'm going to squeeze it and you can see it open. So I tested this. You can, if you hold your finger here and then you suck on the end of that, if it sticks to your tongue and holds, then it means that this duckbill valve is working. And it is. And I can tell by the material that this is made from. It's Vitacon. Um, or I'm sorry, it's not Vitacon, but it's something like that. Um, that orange stuff is pretty good. So I'm going to actually not replace that. I'm going to leave that in there. Um, and then we're going to reuse this too. There's no need to replace that. It's all just a metal part. And uh, it doesn't really, it's not clogged or anything like that in it. So good to go there. So we'll start with the easy stuff first. Um, now, the thing is, what I meant to mention is uh, when you're, take this cap off. When you're putting these in here, you're going to have to, you know, reach down in there and, and fish a lot of stuff out. So it's, it's good to have a couple of pairs of these, um, these uh, hemostats where you can reach down in there and pull things out with. Makes it a whole lot easier. But we're also going to cut the tips of these off so that we can push them down in these holes. And on this one, there's two holes here. There's this one here, which goes down to the tank. And we want to make sure that this weighted filter uh, ends up down here in the bottom of the tank. You know, that way, no matter which way you turn it, it should have oil in it. And then we'll put the little one in second because it goes on the top and it's a little easier to get to. Going to nip this off square like that. Put my filter on it. And I'm actually going to put a zip tie on that real quick because that went on there pretty loose. Might be unnecessary, but why not? Cinch it down good. Okay. And now, this is important. Is you want this, like we said, to go down in the back of that. So I've got to take this other one and I've got to measure. I can see from where the other one was. that it's it's from here. I can see the little crimp spot where it was sitting in the tank. So that should be about right. And if I measure it like from here, you know, you can kind of tell, you know, where it's gonna lay. Then that'll be just about right. And then I'm gonna push it down in there. Make sure it goes all the way in the bottom. I can feel it bumping around in the bottom down here, so that's in there just like we want it. And then just to double check on the other end here, going from here to here, um, that's about exactly the same length there. Might want to pull this out just a tad, about like that. That should be just about perfect. And then for the little piece, kind of the same thing. Give ourselves a little bit of room. Cut it. You know what I'm going to do? Well, I already made my thing. That's fine. 
I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to spear it off on the end like that. Stick it in there just like we did before. Pull it through. I'm going to pull it almost all the way through so I can get it out and put the end of it here. Nip it like we did. Kind of double checking to make sure I haven't cut off too much. <clears throat> and then we're going to have to, we need to take this piece off. The old piece. Like that. Be careful you don't break anything. Then this goes on here. Like that. I'm not going to put a zip tie on that. I think it'll be okay. And then, this is kind of important, but when you pull this through, you want to kind of twist it where you want this little valve here to be as close to pointing up to the top as you can, you know, like that. You know, kind of doesn't matter, but if you're, if it's full of oil, you know, this thing can suck air back in, the little top one. And if you've got it completely chugged up full of oil, which you probably shouldn't do anyway, if you've got this thing twisted where it's kind of at the top, you got a little bit of a fighting chance there. Uh, but it, it kind of needs to be down kind of like that, you know, inside there, if you can see that. It doesn't need to be sticking up here at the top. And then I'm just going to, once again, kind of look at where this piece was to make sure I've got enough room, and I do. Okay, so that's going to go around and connect on the carburetor. So we're good with there. <clears throat> that's it for the the uh, oil tank. You can put a lid on it, and just with your mouth, you can do a little pressure test. Like that. I sucked on it with my tongue and held it. I think that's going to hold it. Okay, for the fuel tank, um, pretty much identical, exact same thing. I'm not going to, in the interest of time, not video that whole thing. What I will say, though, is that when we put this line, the return line that comes up and it needs to, to connect on the inside of this valve, you want to make sure you leave enough hose there so that when you unscrew the cap and take it off, you know, that you can kind of let it dangle to the side without it pulling, you know, and coming apart. So you don't want to be too close. And it doesn't really matter if that's too long or too short. You know, if it's if it's really too long, it's just going to take you longer to see the gas and the primer ball. But other than that, it's not going to affect anything. So you want to be generous with that line. Okay, on this one, I had to heat it up just a little bit. Nipples a little bit bigger, but no big deal. And then I'm going to kind of look at it, and I want to make sure that this can loop around and go back down in here. So I'm going to add, I'm going to pull just a little bit more through. Again, same thing as we did for the other one. You can kind of see how the other one here was right there and kind of looped down in the bottom like that. So we sort of want the same distance on this coming through here. So I'm gonna need a little bit more. A lot more actually. About like that. I can feel it knocking on the bottom in there, so I just want to pull it up a little bit where it doesn't do that.
right about there. I'm going to push it back in just a touch. So that's, that's perfect. So these are finished. Uh, I've ordered another cap for this, like I mentioned before. Um, so this is just a test fit, but it should go right on. So these are ready to go back in place. Um, now we just need to rebuild the carburetor and we're ready to put it back together.